Tools to do this job. So you're gonna need a 3 8 inch ratchet. This particular one has a very slim head. That's the one I like, but you certainly can use a normal ratchet. Next tool, 14 millimeter spark plug socket. This is what the manufacturer recommends. I highly recommend getting the metric 14 millimeter size. This is a three inch regular um, extension. This fits into your spark plug socket. Phillips head screwdriver. Flathead screwdriver. Gonna need a spark plug gapping set. You can get these at any auto parts store. A lot of even Honda dealers sell them. You'll need that to gap your spark plug. And then last but not least, Honda spark plug. So a lot of you are gonna say, why do I need the Honda? Watch the rest of this video and I'll explain it. It makes your life a little bit easier and you're guaranteed to get the right plug if you buy it at your dealer. And all together, that's what you need. Pretty easy job. Watch the rest of the video and I'll show you how I do it. All right, YouTubers. So one of my loyal viewers asked me if I could show you how to replace the spark plug on an EU 7000 IS. So there aren't a lot of videos on this because this generator is still pretty new. But if you read the book, you're actually supposed to replace the spark plug. I think it, the manual actually says whenever it needs it. But in my case, I like to do the plug still every year, and I might be a little bit old school, but I would recommend that you want to at least do it every two years. I've had a couple plugs over the years go bad, and on something like a generator, it's well worth the three bucks to replace it before it ends up being a problem. So if your generator is brand new, you don't need to do it, but I think it's important to know how to because you might need to do it at some point. Flathead screwdriver. I'm on the left-hand side of the generator. This is the left door, and that's if you're facing the control panel. It doesn't really matter though, you only have two doors. So keep opening them until you see a spark plug. So we're gonna open this door, and for purposes of this video, you don't need to do this yourself. Honda's pretty clever. This door has a tendency to wanna to close a little bit, so if you actually lift this off, it'll actually come out, and with a little bit of finagling, it pops off, so we're gonna put this aside where it doesn't get damaged or scratched. In a previous video, I showed you how to do the air cleaner, but in this one, we're gonna learn all about the spark plug today. Let's start with a Phillips head screwdriver, easy enough. And first, let's explain where the spark plug is. So this is the spark plug um, cover right in this area, and it's identified with a very easy to see Phillips head screw. So we're gonna unscrew that, just a few turns. And this is what they call a captive screw. So what happens is this screw never actually will fall out. It holds the screw, which is why they call it captive. So once it's very loose, don't worry that it's not gonna pop out. You're just gonna gently lift the cover off. And so now at this point, what we're going to do, we're going to need some close-ups so you can really see how this works. So the spark plug boot, as they call it, is actually right here. So when you're at home, don't be so nervous because this area is pretty well lit because I've got some uh, creative lighting going on. But at home, you might not be able to see it quite so well. I actually recommend doing it outside if you can. So all you need to do, no tools, I just have my hand with, my, of course, my gloves on. And this little boot tab right here, it might not be the exact name for it, but all you need to do is pull that off. So the easiest way is to just use your hands and grip it with your thumb and your forefinger and just pull that out. And that's it. So right now, you can see that we've got the boot off and underneath in here, from my fingers pointing, hopefully you can see the top of the spark plug that's right here. So what we're gonna do, I like to tuck this out of the way a little bit. Right here. So what we need to do now, we need a spark plug tool that's gonna go in there and I'm gonna show you how that works bit of a tight clearance. You've got your spark plug in here and you've got a frame right here. So my recommendation is you're going to need a spark plug socket and in this case because this is a foreign machine or a Japanese machine it's metric but you can use other sizes but the official size is a 14 millimeter spark plug socket. This may not look exactly like yours does but 14 millimeter is the size you want. So the next thing you've got to get because this by itself is going to be so far in you won't be able to do it. You need an extension. I recommend this particular extension or this size. So the reason is, this is a three inch extension. So if you use a longer extension than these two, so I'm gonna put these together. So you're looking for about six inches of length on this. And the reason you need this is, the next step you've gotta do is insert this tool onto the spark plug and make sure it's seated properly. But the real challenge, as you can see, it's a little bit tight in here. If you get an extension that comes way out, the problem is the angle, it's gonna hit this frame and you're actually gonna damage your spark plug. So my recommendation is you want the extension inside the frame. So the frame is actually here, the extension is in, Let's see if I can zoom a little more, 
hard to get from that angle, but you'll see it when I put the ratchet on it. So in my case, I'm using a little bit of an old school ratchet. This is just a regular ratchet, even though it looks a little bit unusual. I like it for tight situations. So at this point now, again, I'm gonna push the boot out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna put this spark plug tool on. So again, the key is you don't want any pressure on this ratchet. I can still put my finger up in the frame and there's still room. So I'm gonna zoom in on this a couple of different ways so that you can really get the angle of what's going on here. So again, I've got the ratchet on top of the spark plug boot, and I can't stress this enough because if you are putting pressure on that spark plug as you pull it out, you absolutely can damage it. So the key is, if your ratchet is a little bit wiggly afterwards, that's okay, as provided that you're using the 14 millimeter socket. It has to be tight on there, but you just need clearance for the ratchet. So I'm sorry if I've over explained that, but it's really important. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen your spark plug. Okay, that's out. So in my recommendation, I don't use my ratchet to loosen the spark plug. Once it's loose, I pull that right off and then I'm gonna actually twist this by hand. And the reason again I do that is because if I'm doing it by hand, I'm not gonna damage this. I'm gonna zoom back. So I'm gonna slowly do this and I'm gonna unscrew it. And you keep going until it really is quite loose. And again, if you're using a spark plug socket, once you're done and you take the plug out, it should come out and the plug should be on the end of your socket. So let me zoom back out a little bit. And now you and it actually looks pretty good. Spark That's your spark plug hole right there. So now that we've got our spark plug out, we're gonna get a replacement and we're gonna take a look at it. All right, so now we wanna get our new spark plug ready and get it installed. So it's actually pretty easy, I'll show you the steps. So the first thing to talk about is the ends of these spark plugs. So when you look at the ends, you see these threads. So in the old days, you used to spend a lot of um, time and effort putting anti-seize compound on these. And I know that a lot of guys still do. By today's standards and per NGK, who is the manufacturer of the spark plug Honda recommends, you do not put anything on these threads. So you take the spark plug right out of the box and it is ready to go except for one thing. All right, so now we've got to gap this plug. So let's take our feeler gauge and we're gonna put it into the gap and we're gonna run it in. So there should be a little bit of resistance here and that's what you're looking for, just a small amount of resistance. It shouldn't be very loose. It shouldn't be so tight that you can't get it in. My recommendation is if this is not the case, I don't recommend bending these on your own unless you're pretty experienced. So my recommendation, again, I said it earlier, buy this plug at a Honda dealer, ask for the Honda branded plug and it won't actually have the Honda name on the plug. It'll still say NGK, but it'll come in a Honda box. So when you look at it, this is gonna be the end of it. It's gonna say BPR6ES. So this is the correct plug per the manufacturer's instructions for the EU7000IS. So again, if you've learned one thing from this part, make your life easy, pay $2 extra and go to the Honda dealer, or order it online, get the Honda part number of the plug and you'll get the plug ready to go. Typically it's gapped, but I'm still telling you it's worth double checking it with that feeler gauge to make certain. Or if you're having a problem, ask your dealer to check the gap and they typically will for you and you can still do the job yourself and save a lot of money. All right, so once your plug is gapped, and again, you don't need anything on the end of it, all we need to do is take our spark plug tool, reattach the plug in it, and now our goal is to get the spark plug in that hole. So very gently, you are gonna put that tool right back in. And I like to wiggle it a little, a little bit. And once you feel that that spark plug is there, you can very gently, I re absolutely recommend, you turn that tool by hand, and you're gonna spin it until the spark plug finally tightens up. And again, I do not recommend using the ratchet until the spark plug finally reaches the bottom like it did right there. So I can't turn it anymore by hand. And if you want to check it to be sure, you can even loosen it and just make sure it feels like it's threading in smoothly. So I'm going to retighten it back up to where it was. And now all we need is to use our ratchet. So take our ratchet, put it on there, and I have to reverse the direction. And this is again, just an average ratchet. And when you tighten it, this is where things need, a need to be tight, but not so firm that they're going to 
tear the end of it off. So I just recommend putting it on fairly tight. Typically they recommend that after that spark plug touches the bottom, that the ratchet moves a quarter of a turn. And what a quarter of a turn means, it goes from here a quarter of the way across. Consider a full circle, so you're going a fourth of the way. And it can vary by manufacturer. So now that that's done, and it's tightened up, we're gonna remove our ratchet and our spark plug tool. So now that our spark plug is installed and it's tight, we need to put this boot back on. It's very easy. You just slide it onto the spark plug and you press it until it goes in all the way. And a lot of times you'll feel a little bit of a click from the connector. So we're gonna slide it on. I don't know if you could hear that, but when I push this boot all the way in, it made a little click. So now we've got the plug back in, it's tight. All we've gotta do, zoom out a little, is to put this cover back on. So this just very easily snaps on. So now that that cover's on, we're just gonna tighten it up. We'll screw this in until it's tight. So with this cover, it doesn't stay on 100%, like it's pretty tight, but if you pull on the edge, you'll see there's a little bit of play, and that's totally normal. So the good news is, at this point, we're done. So all we need, we're gonna turn our key to on. You're gonna see some control lights light up, and then once they go out, you're ready to go. Push the engine start. Make sure your eco throttle is on the off position. That means the generator is going to fire at full speed. Everything good. This concludes the spark plug change. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for future videos and thank you for watching.